Hello and welcome to the Enter NFT podcast, your go-to hub for knowledge about NFTs, blockchain and crypto in general. We mix it up with your favorite Web3 artists and projects, topped off with the latest news from the Enterverse. My name is Lovecraft and today's topic is Wallet Security Part 2 – Wallet Splitting. Wallet security should be a priority for anyone engaging in crypto. This episode explains why the age-old expression of not putting all your eggs in the same basket also applies to crypto wallets. A common question in the crypto space is whether you should have one wallet address or keep multiple. The answer is always to diversify and make sure that you don't have just one large sum. You will likely need multiple wallets if you interact with different blockchains, as some wallets may only support a given set of networks. With the increasing interest in the overall crypto community also comes bad faith actors. As mentioned in part 1 of the series, you should always put up as many roadblocks as possible for those who want to access your cryptocurrency. What is a wallet? First we should understand what a wallet is the different types and the benefits and detractors of each type. A wallet doesn't store your crypto like a normal real-life wallet. Crypto wallets hold your private keys and prove that you own said cryptocurrency. Remember that your crypto is live on the blockchain at all times. Protect your keys at all times. There are three types of wallet. There are paper, online or hardware wallets. Paper wallets are exactly what they sound like. A piece of paper that you have written or printed your private keys on. Online wallets are probably the most common, most used wallet type. Metamask, Trust Wallet, Binance Smart Wallets are wallets that I could recommend for any user, whether you are just getting into crypto or have been here for years. The ease of access is probably the biggest benefit, but be aware that these wallets could be compromised more often than the other two types. Hardware wallets are external devices to store your private keys, most often resembling a thumb drive. These should be connected to your computer only when you are ready to make a transaction. Hardware wallets and paper wallets are called cold storage, while online wallets are called hot storage. Cold wallets are essentially the safest, but still have a few vulnerabilities, biggest one being you not keeping your private keys private. Hot wallets tend to be vulnerable to phishing attacks because they're generally only protected by a passphrase or none at all. Keep at least two. My recommendation to those just getting into the crypto space is to keep at the very minimum two wallets. You should remember that all transactions and wallet holders are public on the blockchain. This trustless system isn't quite perfect and there are many people who are much smarter than me trying to create new and divisive ways to part you from your hard-earned funds. Yes, you may remain anonymous, but at the same time wallets with large balances can attract some undue attention from unscrupulous characters. Plus, there are so many sites like WhaleAlert.io that keep tabs on large wallets that come across every platform, token or coin, which can be pretty concerning if you are the holder of one of them. Personally, common sense would dictate that you do not stash all of your coins in a single wallet, as it would be pretty horrifying to wake up and find everything you worked on gone for good. Even when you're not considering the bad faith actors, there is even a possibility that you lose a passphrase or even a computer or device holding your crypto wallets. The advantage of never keep all your eggs in one basket directly applies to this line of thinking. Strategic investors in the regular financial sectors don't keep all their assets in a single account. Their diversification is key to success and protection of their assets. Mitigation of risk should always be at the forefront of your brain, especially when protecting financial assets. No one ever wants to think about losing a wallet due to scams, dusting, bad faith actors or even just losing a key. However, Taking the steps to protect yourself by splitting your wallets and being cognizant of how much you keep in one will pay off leaps and bounds if something happens to you. Some financial thoughts. My perspective on this is we are eliminating the banks from how we transact. So we must treat ourselves and our wallets like banks in terms of keeping our funds safe, anonymous and secure. 
This comes down to being knowledgeable about our space and making sure that we are up to date with any new attacks or devices that bad faith actors may use. Putting as many walls between your main wallet and the wallet you interact with will keep you as safe as possible. To be honest, wallets are free and it seems to be a very bad idea not to take advantage of them. When choosing wallet providers, get to know how they work intimately. Knowing the ins and outs of how they function and what extra features they have to keep you safe, such as layers of protection like two-factor authentication, may save you a headache and quite a bit of money in the future. Hardware wallets like Trezor or Ledger come with a huge amount of features and the ability to store your private keys, which is the ultimate form of protection in the wild west of crypto. Closing up, it's always good to do your due diligence and research the wallets you want to use. And if they will interact with the blockchain you are invested in. Knowledge is power and in this space most of the knowledge will have come from doing your homework and verifying and testing things. This may sound like a step in the wrong direction in terms of the evolution of fintech. But we should all realize that we are still so early in the crypto game. We are revolutionizing the way that we will be doing business in the future. And all I can say now to end this is just stay Sifu. Do your research. It's never a bad idea. And with that, I'd like to wrap it up for today. Thank you for listening in on this episode of the Enter NFT podcast. The content was taken from enter.blog and written by the team. If you like what we do, subscribe and make sure you leave us some stars or a review. And of course, help spread the word by recommending us to your friends. Follow Enter NFT on your favorite social media platform to stay on top of all things Enter. And I will see you next time.